I need to tell you guys about the bizarre aftermath of Super Size Me that nobody talks about. What would happen if I ate nothing but McDonald's for 30 days straight? Would I suddenly be on the fast track to becoming an obese American? Let's find out. Super Size Me. If you don't remember, Super Size Me was a documentary created by Morgan Spurlock where he ate nothing but McDonald's for 30 days straight. This documentary was such a big deal when it came out in 2004. Like I'm pretty sure almost every kid in North America had to watch it in school, myself included. But think about that for a second. Imagine how triggered McDonald's must have been that every kid in America all at once was watching this. See, now's the time of the meal when you start getting the McStomach ache. You start getting the McTummy, the Mc, you, get the, you get the McGurgles in there. Morgan Spurlock's conclusion was essentially that eating McDonald's every day will ruin your life and your health. There is no way the McDonald's wasn't fuming about this. This is such bad PR for them. Have you ever wondered what happened as a consequence of Super Size Me? Well, I looked into it and I found the other side of the story that I'm pretty sure none of us have ever heard before. And oddly, in order to tell it, we need to fast forward 10 years later to small town Iowa. In 2013, a science teacher named John Cisna decided to conduct a little experiment of his own with some of his high school students. We are going to try to replicate the Super Size Me documentary that was done, only do it exactly opposite in the way it was done several years ago. Voila, Mr. Cisna. He ate nothing but McDonald's for 90 days straight. Except instead of getting sick like Spurlock, John Cisna ended up losing almost 60 pounds thanks to this McDonald's diet. He then made a documentary of his own, went somewhat viral, and gained a ton of media attention in the process. For six months, John Cisna ate nothing but McDonald's. Nothing but McDonald's. Nothing but McDonald's. I had lost seven inches off my stomach, four inches off my hips. I had Big Macs, quarter pounders with cheese. All eating what Morgan Spurlock has convinced the world is bad for you. He and his team of students came to a much different conclusion. And the issue for me was, in addition to this documentary being a pretty cringe, the documentary ended up being both the perfect advertisement for McDonald's and rebuttal to supersize me. Like to the point that McDonald's couldn't have written it better themselves. If I would have given the kids this project and said, look, I want you to go to a grocery store and I want you to put me on a 2000 calorie diet, of course you're gonna be better off. The only difference between that and what we did is that we had a smaller grocery store. Our grocery store was McDonald's. Wow, well, man, you got a real way with words there. So I'm listening to this and I'm like, okay, there's no way in hell McDonald's didn't put him up to this. So I start looking into it. I do my best to dig into John Cisna, looking for a link between Cisna and McDonald's. But ultimately I find no evidence that this was a paid advertisement. And Cisna's documentary was created in 2013. That's almost 10 full years after Super Size Me was released in 2004. If McDonald's really wanted to disprove anything from Super Size Me, we would assume they would do it in a more timely fashion. Like there's no way they would retaliate 10 years later, would they? This isn't about just McDonald's though, for you. And this isn't about McDonald's at all. Mm -hmm. You might be thinking, okay, if this documentary is not a thinly veiled advertisement for McDonald's, then what exactly is the purpose of the whole thing? And John Cisna wants you to know that this was all done for the good of the children. You see, this experiment wasn't about McDonald's. This experiment wasn't about me. This experiment was about teaching kids to use critical skills in making proper choices. That's weird because if I had to put in order what this documentary seemed to be about, I would put A, McDonald's, B, John Cisna, and actually, I probably wouldn't even include a C. In my opinion, literally the only thing that this documentary taught kids was that they should consider eating more McDonald's. John's a unique individual. He has a lot of different ideas. He's an extremist because he doesn't do anything halfway. The kids set the entire menus up. All I did is every Sunday, I'd go online to see what they had selected for me. And then I went off to McDonald's. And what's really amazing that people find unbelievable is probably 95% of every day I had French fries. So the official story is that in addition to the whole choices and critical thinking thing, the point of the documentary is for John Cisna to teach his students that what you eat is not as important as how much you eat in terms of weight loss. Okay. Sounds fair, potentially valuable. But again, if this is our stated goal, it gets off to a real rocky start.
We are going to test the hypothesis. Is it possible for a person to eat nothing but breakfast, lunch, and dinner at McDonald's for 90 straight days to become healthy? And stop it right there. Why can't he just say lose weight? Why does he have to say become healthy? healthy. Like, dude, you don't see anything wrong with telling your high school students that McDonald's is healthy. And also, if the whole thing is supposed to be a science experiment and you're their science teacher, healthy is a little bit of a uh, vague metric as a starting point. John Susan then goes around and asks his students if any of them think eating nothing but McDonald's could possibly be healthy, and they all say no. McDonald's is really unhealthy. So you currently have a school full of children who all think that McDonald's is unhealthy and your goal as their science teacher is to prove them wrong? Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. To teach them choices and critical thinking. Pfft. I didn't know because it hasn't really been mentioned that much thus far. The guy doesn't see any issue at all. There's nothing wrong with fast food. There's nothing wrong with McDonald's. I can understand wanting to teach kids the value of calories in versus calories out. Balance, right? All foods fit. You can have McDonald's every once in a while, just don't ever do it. And actually just a few years prior, a nutrition professor at Kansas State University went on an all Twinkie diet with this purpose in mind. And he successfully lost weight. He lost 27 pounds in two months. But big asterisk, current research suggests that due to the nature of ultra processed foods, this is a very unlikely outcome for most people. But this professor, he didn't go around calling his experiment healthy. He explicitly told people not to do what he did. He is not recommending it for everyone. It was just a calorie counting experiment. And he was around college students, young adults, not high school kids. John Cisna, on the other hand, dealing with teenagers doesn't bother to give one disclaimer. Not even once. This is the McDonald's that I come to in the evenings on the way home from school. And as an interesting little side note, it turns out that John Sisman got all of the food he ate on this experiment completely for free. How? Well, it turns out that one of his friends is a McDonald's franchise owner. Sisna approached the owner of the local McDonald's franchise about the idea, and the owner was so interested to see what the results were, he agreed to provide those 90 days of meals to Sisna at no charge. Again, odds are stacking up that you might be working with McDonald's, John Cisna. And it really only gets more suspicious from here. So what I plan on doing at the end of the experiment is then I'll take the blood work again and we can compare the beginning to the end. What if you do it halfway through, take your blood halfway through, also? Well, that's not a bad idea because then it'll give McDonald's a, an idea uh, of whether this is, is working or not. There it is. There it is. Then it will give McDonald's a, an idea uh, of whether this is, is working or not. Then it will give McDonald's an idea if it's working or not? Like he just admitted in this official documentary that he's working with McDonald's, no? I do not see any way that was a slip of the tongue. If it wasn't already suspicious enough that McDonald's themselves couldn't have written a better advertisement, you go and drop that one in there? How could that just be a mistake? Like what does that mean? It means something. So 60 straight days of nothing but breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And some of the non-believers that started this program around here are now starting to say, wow, there must be something to this. Didn't think McDonald's was this good. Makes me realize like you can get healthy from eating McDonald's. McDonald's can be good and it's not just all about the salty french fries and the unhealthy grease. It's really shocking to me because I originally thought you're just, he was gonna just gain a lot of weight but I, he is healthy now. Well, mission accomplished John Cisna. The children at your high school now believe that McDonald's is perfectly healthy. The documentary then shows that not only did John Cisna lose a substantial amount of weight, but his blood markers demonstrate that he did in fact get healthier during this process. Cough while beginning a 45 minute exercise regime and biking to work after being sedentary for 45 years. Cough. I'm sure none of that had anything to do with the positive results of your test. And it was all thanks to the healthfulness of McDonald's foods. And that's it, that's the documentary. <laughs> he loses weight, he gets all the kids to change their opinion on McDonald's, and that's really it. So do we see a problem with this? The whole thing was about how important choices are for weight loss. The point behind this documentary is that, hey, it's choice. We all have choices. It's our choices that make us fat, not McDonald's. And yet, he didn't even show us one choice he made the entire three months? Like, at what point was anyone taught 
anything about choices. Which is extremely ironic, by the way, because I found out that this documentary was created in response to John Cisna's feelings about the inadequacies of Super Size Me. John Cisna, a science teacher from Iowa, was upset by the documentary Super Size Me, in which a man ate only McDonald's food and gained weight and a host of health problems. The experiment wasn't very good science and unfairly tarnished fast food companies, said Mr. Cisna, so he decided to do something about it. Oh no, not unfairly tarnishing fast food companies. What have they ever done to anyone? <laughs> John Cisna says, not today injustice, not while I'm around. Like Boohoo, one of the richest companies in the entire world got some bad press. The unfairness of it all. Like just of all the injustices in the world, this is the one that you're like, no, 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 no. I'm putting my foot down. I'm not just going to sit by while somebody slanders the golden arches like that. John Cisna was right about one thing though. Super Size Me did tarnish fast food companies, McDonald's in particular. Super Size Me kind of set my opinion, I suppose. I didn't eat McDonald's for quite a long time. There's not a lot of information about how McDonald's reacted to Super Size Me or how Super Size Me really affected McDonald's. But from what I found, the Super Size Me era were very dark days for McDonald's indeed. Started to have like little some chest, not chest pains, but like pressure. You know, I feel like I got pressure on my chest. So uh, I, I figured that's probably not a good thing but <laughs> neither's eating all this, <laughs> so. When the documentary came out in 2004, it had only been three years since Fast Food Nation. Eric Schlosser's brutal expose of the fast food industry that heavily featured McDonald's dirty deeds, including predatory marketing practices toward children, employee exploitation, and issues with food safety. I'm criticizing some of the biggest, most powerful companies in the United States, and they don't like it. They tried to prevent me from visiting schools and speaking to school children. You know, messages sent to the principals and headmasters that I was an improper person uh, to, be, uh, to be visiting schools, and they should be able to deal with a little bit of criticism. It's, their mentality is really about control, total control. On top of that, Super Size Me was inspired by a first of its kind court case. Two obese teenagers sued McDonald's for making them fat. The idea was that McDonald's had allegedly engaged in deceptive advertising, hiding and distorting the true health risk of their products and acting negligently in marketing food products that were physically and psychologically addictive. When a spokesperson for McDonald's comes on TV now and starts talking about the suit and the, and the spokesman says, listen, you can't link our food to these girls being sick. You can't link our food to these girls being obese. Our food is healthy, it's nutritious, it's good for you. And I said, well. The lawsuit was ultimately dismissed and McDonald's denies then and denies now any involvement at all in the obesity epidemic, leaning on the importance of personal responsibility. Quote, this is about choice. This is about personal individual right to choose in the society we live in. There's those choices again. But though McDonald's won in a landslide in the court of law, for the first time in years, the company was under threat in the court of public opinion. Suddenly, all eyes were on McDonald's, so Super Size Me really could not have come at a worse time. Before reaching the eyes of the public, Super Size Me premiered at the Sundance Film Festival in January 2004. Shortly after it hit Sundance, a spokesperson person at McDonald's was asked how they felt about it because it had already been like this big media firestorm. A spokesperson for McDonald's claimed that no representatives from the corporation had seen Super Size Me. Yet a lot of changes took place at McDonald's almost immediately. After years of criticism, McDonald's said today it will begin serving a healthier Happy Meal. Just one day before Super Size Me was released to the public, McDonald's released a Go Active meal and marketing promotion with salad, bottled water, and a a pedometer included in every box. Go up, active! Ronald McDonald fitness ambassadors descended on preschools across the country, leading kids in jumping jack exercise sessions. We were really concerned about McDonald's coming after us. But in the UK and in Australia, they really went after us. In America, however, McDonald's didn't seem to retaliate much at all. They simply announced the end of supersizing, while still claiming it had nothing to do with that movie, of course. And McDonald's official public comment was that 
We see no reason to respond to Morgan Spurlock when so many other experts have already spoken out on the film's distortions and irresponsibility, including those consumers who are voluntarily conducting their own independent 30-day McDonald's diet to disprove his over-the-top behavior. But the damage was done. That year, McDonald's profits dropped for the first time in 30 years. Although there's really no reason to rejoice. A few years later, they were dominating again and were making record profits and have pretty much just gone up since. Well, because Morgan Spurlock just uncontrollably ate whatever he wanted to. In fact, I would never show Super Size Me in my classroom because I never saw the educational value of it. Now, as far as I know, there were some valid criticisms of Super Size Me. One of the biggest being that apparently Morgan Spurlock refused to release his food logs, leading people to question whether the outcomes he experienced in the documentary were really realistic for the way an average person might eat at McDonald's. But Cisna actually went as far as to call Morgan Spurlock supersize me irresponsible journalism. Like if you're gonna come in hot like that, I expect, you know, a little, a little something from your end. But John Cisna's documentary, if we kindly allot it that term, didn't even show us one meal during the 90 day experiment, not even one. So here we are, three months later, 90 days of eating nothing but breakfast, lunch, and dinner at McDonald's. Best I can do is zoom in on whatever's going on right there. That's it. Like if John says his problem with Morgan Spurlock was that his outcomes were unrealistic for eating the way a normal person might eat at McDonald's. Wow. Oh yeah. Oh boy. 210 I'm gonna pounds. say 210, right on the money. I think we know the damage that can be done. Then Cisna needed to prove that he was eating the way a normal person would at McDonald's, right? Because let's not pretend for one second that it would be easy to maintain a calorie deficit eating McDonald's. If Cisna consumed three standard meals at McDonald's, his day would look a bit like this. Breakfast, Egg McMuffin, plus hash brown, plus orange juice, 790 calories. Lunch, McChicken, plus medium fries, plus Coke, 1,020 calories. Dinner, Big Mac meal, 1,080 calories, equals 2,890 calories in total. But in his documentary, Cisna has three different students at his school using McDonald's meal ordering app in order to plan out the meals so that they can be low calorie enough to meet his deficit. What's really cool is that when I put this together, I thought, okay, this is gonna be tough for the kids. And I go to McDonald's website and they have a thing called My Menu Builder. Oh my goodness, you can click on any single food that they have at McDonald's, all the nutritional information will pop up. As the documentary stands, it implies that John Cisna effortlessly lost weight by eating Big Macs and McFlurries every day. This isn't something to say, well, he only went to McDonald's and ate salads, uh-uh. I had the Big Macs, I had the Quarter Pounders with cheese, I had every, I had uh, Sundays, I had ice cream cones. I can eat any food at McDonald's that I want as long as I'm smart with the rest of the day of what I balance it out with. When in fact, in order to create balanced, low calorie meals, it was an extremely calculated affair that required the manual labor of three students. And I would call that misrepresentation um, irresponsible journalism. Now I know what you're saying. You're saying nobody's supposed to eat this food three times a day. No wonder all this stuff happened to you. But the scary part is, there are people who eat this food regularly. Some people even eat it every day. So while my experiment may have been a little extreme, it's not that crazy. So after doing a little research, I was able to find a one day sample menu of John Cisna's McDonald's diet. He had two egg white delight McMuffins, a bowl of McDonald's fruit and maple oatmeal, and 1% milk for breakfast, and typically a salad for lunch. Then at dinner, he'd often have a more traditional value meal. So first, almost every article talking about what John Cisna ate mentioned these egg white delights. An average meal, they would give me two egg white delights. Two egg white delights. That's the egg white delight. New egg white delight McMuffin. <laughs> And get this, John Cisna's documentary was filmed around September 2013. This press release shows the McDonald's Egg White Delights came out just four months prior to that in May 2013. How convenient for McDonald's once again that their new product happens to be being promoted. Not to mention, most of these healthy options weren't even added to the menu until after Super Size Me came out. Many of which have been discontinued, by the way. The Egg White Delight? 
gone and McDonald's stopped serving salads of any kind since 2020. Why do you think that is? Do you think McDonald's would stop serving a product that was making them a lot of money? I don't think so. It's almost certainly because the average McDonald's customer does not order these options. So anyway, Sizna's documentary comes out. He gains a little media attention for his weight loss. And so naturally he immediately writes a book and then quits his job to become a McDonald's brand ambassador. According to this very private feeling document that comes up when you Google John Sizna's name, he left his job teaching at Colonesco High School in July of 2014. And then that very same month went on to work for McDonald's for two full years. What exactly is a McDonald's brand ambassador you ask? Well, well, for Cisna, it involved McDonald's paying him money and then flying him around to schools, middle schools and high schools, to talk about his experience. So you're going to be speaking at the Baraboo High School today to students there. What do you want people to take away from this conversation? I want people to understand a couple things. First of all, this has nothing to do with McDonald's. McDonald's even polished up his little documentary and made it their own and renamed it 540 Meals choices make all the difference. They then sent it out to schools nationwide. They also created a official teacher's discussion guide for use with the film, at least half of which was devoted to discrediting Super Size Me. The 20 minute film is meant to serve as a supplemental video to current food and nutrition curriculum. It even specifically recommends the video be shown alongside Super Size Me if and when Super Size Me is included in the curriculum. 540 Meals also included this little rebuttal animation of Spurlock and Cisna. So I guess that answers whether or not McDonald's was thinking about Super Size Me almost 10 full years later. Now, unsurprisingly, parents don't generally take well to McDonald's, sending middle-aged men to their schools to casually influence their children to consume more McDonald's. Unless you dress them up as a clown, then that tends to go over a little bit better. One parent swiftly launched a change.org petition that garnered over 88 thousand signatures. And as the outrage continued to boil, John Cisna had this to say. I can't see how kids would see that this message is telling them to eat more McDonald's or fast food, or how anyone would think that I'm promoting McDonald's. You have no idea why people would think that you're promoting McDonald's. You, the guy paid by McDonald's to talk about McDonald's, have no idea why people think that you're promoting McDonald's. That's a rad flag for me. I refuse to believe that anybody is that dumb. Also, John Cisna. My McDonald's diet, lose weight eating fast food. John Cisna's life changed forever because of his McDonald's diet and he hopes that yours will too. Also, I could not not mention this just because it's funny. The other book that he wrote, Viral to Viril. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. Also, the definition of the word Viril having strength, energy, and a strong sex drive. Anyway, thankfully, the outrage finally bubbled to the point that McDonald's had to end their brand ambassador relationship with John Cisna. Now, I never did manage to find proof that McDonald's and John Cisna were working together before they were officially working together. And honestly, after reading the excerpt from Viral to Viril, the guy is so fame hungry and just so like generally wacky that if it wasn't for this line, then it'll give McDonald's a, an idea. Uh, of whether this is, is working or not. I would be less suspicious about the entire thing. Except I did end up finding a different smoking gun of sorts. It turns out that John Cisna was not the only person to lose weight eating a all McDonald's diet. In 2004, a string of what the media called McDieters also attempted an all McDonald's diet after becoming infuriated by Super Size Me. And if you'll recall, McDonald's referenced these McDieters in their official Super Size Me press release. One of the most notable was a filmmaker by the name of So So Whaley, who was also so infuriated by Super Size Me that she decided to film her own experiment and turn it into her own documentary. Good evening, Moaning Dog Productions. Yes, this is So So Whaley. Yes, I'm the person who ate at McDonald's for 30 days and lost weight. There were actually quite a few people who did that. No, this is not an ad for McDonald's. Like John Cisna, so so lost weight, about 10 pounds in one month. I lost three pounds during the first week of eating at McDonald's. 
true. And she also felt really strongly about the value of choice. I wanted to get another message out to the American public. There's so much more involved than just blaming a fast food company for our obesity, she said. It's a personal responsibility. It's a matter of choice. Like I understand, okay. Super Size Me was a huge documentary. Maybe there are some people that strongly disagree and see their opportunity to get their 15 minutes of fame. Except Soso's experiment ran between April 1st, 2004 and May 1st, 2004. AKA it started and finished before Super Size Me even came out. And when I looked into it, news article confirmed Soso said she had not seen the movie yet. And yet she decided to completely uproot her life in order to refute it. I don't understand how you get that mad about a movie you've never seen. Searching Soso's name further led me to a strange website that seemed to exist solely to discredit Supersize Me. The Supersize Con. This is the Class Clown Science Project. Mcdiculous. And not only does this page link to the official McDonald's rebuttal site, but to other successful McDieters just like Soso and Cisna. Oh, and uh, lucky for us, Tech Central Station, hosted by James K. Glassman, has a message of gratitude for their sponsors, including our very own McDonald's. Oh, and conveniently, Soso also released the documentary in conjunction with something called the Competitive Enterprise Institute. Institute, a group that claims to fight for less regulation, freedom, and fairness for all, but is actually a known industry lobby group. CEI is funded by major corporations, including food and tobacco companies, and fights for them whenever they're in a bind. When one journalist asked Whaley what she had to say about the view that CEI is a front for corporations, her response was, well, everyone has to have someone speak out for them. And that is the very bizarre aftermath of Super Size Me that you have probably never heard before. We can't prove anything, obviously, but after all that digging, I feel it's safe to say that the whole thing was fishier than a McFish <laughs> or a Vallejo fish or Fish McBites or whatever. So anyhow, wish me luck. Off I go.